the word right, <laughs> right where we're Yeah, that works. Yeah. So that is a great question because there is, uh, you know, millions and millions of bugs out there. We have 2,000 species of edible bugs catalog today. That number is only going to grow. But when you think about it from like a chef's angle, that's like a treasure chest full of ingredients and flavors that have yet to be discovered. And so we're really pushing them on the chefs. Uh, from a people angle though, something I definitely caution, especially when there's kids in the audience, is if you get super excited about eating bugs, don't go outside and pick one up and eat it. Bugs are so small that they quite literally are what they eat. So if you're eating a bug from Los Angeles or the OC, it's probably gonna be full of pesticides or trash. Uh, if you're eating bugs that are sold in stores for human consumption, they are farm-raised on grains or, you know, food, peels, and, and healthy stuff. And is there a difference in taste quality? Yes. So in, uh, they don't do it at a big scale yet, but with crickets, if you feed your cricket mint, it'll take on a minty flavor profile. And if you feed it like cilantro, it'll have a cilantro profile. So another thing for chefs to play around with too. It's pretty cool. Wow. Or yeah. like if you feed it just chocolate. I don't think that's been done. I'm not sure actually how they fare on just chocolate, but it's worth the try. Okay, we definitely <laughs> want to find out about that. That's so cool. Um, so we're, today we're actually going to taste two different types. No, sorry, we're going to taste two different products, but one different, one just one bug. One bug. The cricket. Yeah. The mighty cricket. <laughs> and I've actually put some down here. You guys can come up at any point and take a look. Um, will you tell us about what was it like for you the first time you like actually put it in your mouth, started like enjoying it. What was that like? Did you have a fear that you had to get over at first? Yeah, so my, uh, counterintuitively, I am still actually a bit afraid of certain live bugs, which might not make sense. It certainly doesn't make sense to my friends in the bug space where they have pet beetles and they're just used to having them crawl. I had a phobia of ants growing up and I'm still a little scared of live bugs. Quite frankly, I'd be afraid of a live chicken was running at me and I eat those too. Uh, but it goes to show that even if you are afraid of bugs, you can still eat them when they're processed as ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, and the crickets, it's good to think about them as something uh, not out of the Lion King. There's no slimy yet satisfying moment and guts flying everywhere. It's a dried uh, kind of seed or nut-like taste and will have the texture of uh, an almond. Love it. But they all don't probably taste like nuts or seeds. I'm sure they have a wide variety of flavor as well as texture, right? Yes. So the crickets will be a little bit more on the, the nuttier, subtly umami, a little mushroominess. Um, you have something like black ants. They will actually taste like lemon, like peppery lemon. Wow. Yeah. They have formic acid inside of their systems that they use to communicate and as a defense mechanism. And when they're, they're dried, um, the formic acid will concentrate and then come out with this seasoning flavor that's absolutely amazing. So it's totally natural. Totally natural. It's not like we're giving them lemon zest. Nope. That's mm -hmm. all in the end. So they're kind of the, the caviar of the bug world. And we're, you know, the, the crickets are more like the uh, the staple, kind of like the nut or bread base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you see it in chips and crackers, uh, cakes and, and things like yeah. that. Anything that you would use traditional flour for, you would use like cricket flour for, or raw crickets. And it's gluten free. So, and it's gluten free. Yeah, that buzzword works really well in Los Angeles. Yeah, it really does.